Next thing we have to learn is orchestrator entities. What are entities that you must understand for the orchestrator chapter? For this type cloud.uipath.com. The moment you have signed into cloud.uipath.com, this is something which I have taught in the beginner playlist. How do you sign in and create an account? I hope you have already gone through that and you must be already having an account. So here, if you click on this dot, there you find something called orchestrator. So this is how you would launch orchestrator. So once the page loads, there are two important entities. One is the tenant entities. The other one is called folder entities. So what do I mean by entities? For example, if you click on tenant, the options that you see on the top layer are different when you click on any of the folder that you have created the options here would be different in case you don't have in case you haven't created any folder at least you would have the shade folder by default and the my workspace so there you see the options are different so these are called entities or the elements of the folders and the entities of tenant or the elements of tenant so let's have a quick overview here because we have to learn each of this entity separately one by one. At the moment, let's have an overview. If you click on tenant, the very first entity that you find is robots. So there it will show you how many different, you know, robots you have. For example, the unattended machines and how many attended users you have. For example, if you see Rakesh Kumar Behra is a user, it's a local user and this is a robot account. So th this is where we can set up the robots. We would talk about this in detail in the upcoming series, in the upcoming videos. Next, you have folders. So this entity would allow you to create new folders. So you click on the plus sign and you know start creating the folders and that would appear here. Next is monitoring tab, where you see how many jobs was run, you get a information about machines, your processes, how many processes were run. So all these things we would slowly look at one by one. Then the other entity is called manage access. In the manage access, you have got two different tabs. One is assign roles and the other one is roles. So by default, UiPath comes with certain roles. For example, administrator, allow to be automation developer, allow to be automation user, allow to be folder administrator. So like that, there are multiple different roles. And these roles, I can assign it to any person or machine. For example, there is a person, let's say there's a new user who got added to UiPath Orchestrator and I would like to give him the administrative permission. So I can click on his name and start assigning whatever roles is required for that person. The same thing, we can also do it for the users, uh, for the machines, robot machines. So what is a robot machine? Everything we would learn. At the moment, simply look at the different roles that we can assign to even machines to the users as well. Machines means the unattended machines where you would provide certain access to these robots so that it can access the automation and run it, right? So for that, you have to assign certain roles. So all these things we have to learn in detail. But again, at the moment, let's have an overview of different entities. The next one is a machine where you would be adding different machines. So you, in your company, there could be multiple machines which should be connected to the orchestrator instance. So all those machine configuration is done here. And then packages. So once the automation is built, all those packages are sent to the packages folder of the tenant. So this is the tenant entity package. There is also a similar package entity in the folder, which I'm going to show you. Similar way, there are app version, audit, right? Credentials, and then uh, you have webhooks, you have licenses. So there are different, different entities that you would find in the tenant layer. The next one is the folder entities. So for example, if you, if you go to the folder, you see home, you see automation tab, you see monitoring tab, you see a queue, asset tab, storage buckets, testing. So like likewise, there are multiple different entities are there on the folder layer. So generally I call it as a tenant layer entities. And this one I call it as a folder layer entities. Entities means the elements. Now, for example, if I go to a specific folder, 
Here in the automation tab, you would see the processes. Processes are nothing but the automation that you have created in UEFA Studio and then you have paid with the folder. That means you have linked with a folder. It becomes a process. When you execute a process, when you create a, you know, then it becomes a job. Similar way, if you would like to schedule, so it is known as triggers. Here you can schedule. So all these options I would show you as we proceed. And you would also find something called a log tab. Here you can monitor at what time the automation ran and all those things. Okay. So all those things would appear in this specific sections. So right now what understanding you have got is the tenant entities and the folder entities. If I ask you, can you name some of the tenant entities? You would say machines, robots, folders, right? And then manage access packages. Similar way for folders, you would have automations, monitoring, queues and assets. So queue and assets, these are important ones. If you don't, if you cannot recall everything, that's fine. At least the important ones, for example, queues and machine assets. So if, if I ask you, how will you add a machine? So you would say it is available in the tenant layer. It is a tenant entity where you have the option to add machine. How would you create folders? You would say you have to go to the tenant layer, click on folders and there you have option to create folders. If I ask you, how do you create a process? Right? Process is a folder entity. You have to go to highlight the folder, go to automations and here you have the option to create processes. So all these things we would see in detail, but at the moment, this is the basic overview understanding you should have that the orchestrator has two important entities. One is the tenant entity and the other one is the folder entity. And in the, in these entities, you have multiple different elements or options are available. Now let's move on to the next area.